Hi, I'm Tekt, and this is what I created for round one of the Interactive and Immersive Championship. So it's using a leap motion sensor um, that does hand tracking. Uh, so the first step um, is the sensor data comes in um, from the device as chop channels. Uh, I've got that going through a couple of layers of uh, processing. So first it will freeze the values when it loses tracking, so it stays at kind of a reasonable value instead of just zeroing everything out. Um, so you can see when it loses tracking there, it stays on wherever the last good values were. Um, it's also scaling the values down to a normalized range, um, which makes it a lot easier to work with uh, further down the chain. Um, also looking at uh, pinch size detection, um, so you can see the it's tracking like how, how close the fingers are together. And so with that data, I'm controlling two NVIDIA Flow smoke emitters, um, so those emitters right there. Um, being rendered here. Um, so the position of those uh, follows the hands. So you can see as you, know, you move the hands around, the, the emitters follow them. I'm also using that pinch size to control the, the size of the emitter. So when the fingers are close together, the emitters are really small. When you spread them apart further, they get larger. Um, so I'm also using some edge detection on the output of that to give it a little bit more of a synthetic look. Um, it kind of takes advantage of some of the sort of subtle rendering errors that happen in the, this, in the flow system um, to give it kind of a synthetic look. On um, top of that, I'm laying on to uh, these uh, wireframe disks that again kind of follow the position of the hands um, and get overlaid and mixed in um, with the smoke um, so and then layered on here um, so you can see it gives it like a little bit more pattern to it than just kind of a you know blob of color um, and that's all going into a feedback loop uh, which is using displacement um, and is using both a noise pattern uh, to give it just sort of a random swirling, um, as well as two of these disks that follow the hands around and have a pattern that uh, causes the pixels to be pushed away from uh, wherever the hands are. Um, so here in the feedback loop, because it's in that loop, um, the displacement gets applied continuously, so you've got kind of trails coming off of things instead of it just kind of you know, moving a little bit to the side and staying there keeps moving to the side. Uh, and then at the end, I've got a layer that is adding a frame rate indicator, um, just so I can show that it is actually rendering at uh, you know a, a reasonable speed. Um, and just for fun, I put in a thing that shows a little message every time I save, because I save a lot. And that's what I did for round one. This is the piece that I created for round two, um, the integration challenge. Uh, so I used Resolum, uh, along with Touch Designer. So you can see over here, I've got a Resolum composition. I've got a couple of clips loaded up in there. And over in the Touch Designer project, we've got the Twitch chat component, which listens for messages in the chat and then uh, spits out a little pulse anytime that it gets a certain message. So if I were to say black, you see there's a pulse there on that channel. Um, I've also got some noise data mixed in here that will just kind of randomly trigger some of them um, because during the competition there weren't enough messages coming in to be able to reliably test. So I just kind of mix that in. Um, so it'll kind of give me some data to work with um, while I was developing it. So I'm pulling a couple of those channels out here. I'm using the red channel uh, and that is triggering a clip in Resolume. So we've got it specifying which layer and which clip, uh, and that all gets sent out to, over OSC into Resolume. Uh, so if I trigger blue, it will trigger one of the clips there. Um, and if you trigger red, it, it does a different clip. Um, so I've also got it listening for messages and uh, when it, anytime that it gets in a new piece of text, um, it will send that text um, over OSC again to Resolume into a text animator effect uh, and then trigger it. So if I trigger that, uh, so it sets the text there and um, it will trigger it to play. So I've also got 
a couple of layer a couple of layers back and forth um, using spout um, to get a video stream. First taking um, one of the layers in Resolume and that's kind of feeding back in here. Um, and then I'm mixing in some of the, the text of the most of the username for the most recent messages um, and mixing that in. That gets used as a texture on a cube here. Um, there's then a renderer after that, and it sends it back to Spout. So back in Resolume, um, we've got that channel coming in here. I've also got it hooked up when it was when it detects an event. It will trigger a pulse here, um, which will cause the the cube to spin a little bit faster um, just after that event happens. So that's going. Uh, back to Resolume, as I said, um, getting mixed with uh, that text overlay effect, and then that's feeding back into Touch Designer, getting mixed again with um, another layer here, and adding that uh, additional text overlay, uh, and then that's going to be the output. Um, so strategy there was kind of as many back and forth loops between the two pieces of software as I could come up with. Um, so it's using a combination of OSC for control and Spout for getting video streams back and forth uh, between the two applications.